Good day fellow investors, my name is Sven Karlin and today I'm going to discuss Seth Klarman's rules for investment success. Seth Klarman is the founder of the Baupost group and as you can see he is one of the most successful hedge fund managers in the last 30 years. His returns are on average 20% per year and 20% per year for a longer period of time, 30 years, makes you one of the best investors in the world. Seth Klarman is a pure value investor. This means that he always looks to invest with a margin of safety. And margin of safety is the title of a book he published, I think, uh, 27 years ago. But unfortunately, the book was printed in only 1,000 copies. And the book sells on Amazon now for more than $500 per copy. You can either buy it, but I would advise to invest the $500 into stocks. And the second option you have is to find it in a library. You have to wait a little bit, but you save $500 and you can read it there, you can write down what you find most interesting. What I found are 10 rules and I'm going to share them with you today. Rule number one, invest, don't speculate. There is a big difference between who is an investor and who is a speculator. An investor invests in a business. He, every stock is a part of a business and by buying a stock he buys a part of a business. And he knows that his returns will be perfectly correlated with the earnings of that business in relation to the price he paid. The higher the price you pay in relation to the earnings, the lower the returns. The lower the price you pay, the higher the returns. On the other hand, a speculator is a person that doesn't look so much at fundamentals but what a speculator, speculator cares about is what the market is telling him about the company, about the stock price. Is the stock price going to go up? Is the stock price going to go down? I'm not a speculator, I won't dwell much on speculation but I will tell you that in history there are very, very, very few successful long-term speculators. You can do good for a year, two years, and then usually speculators lose a lot of money. However, if speculating is your thing, be sure to become a professional and know more than 98% of other people speculating. Then you can win. If you don't have so much time or you want to take it easier, then value investing is the thing for you. Rule number two, and this is a rule people often forget. Don't pay fees to Wall Street. Fees are the, one of the major destroyers of investors' wealth. If you pay 1% in fees per year to wealth manager, to investment fund or something like that. You can just add it up 1% every year in 20 years. It's 20 with interest, with compounding, it's 20, 30% of your portfolio. That's a huge amount to pay for something you practically don't need because with a little bit of work, you know yourself better than any, any other wealth manager there and you know What's the best investment for you? There is a great book from the 1930s titled Where are the customers' yachts? Everybody who's interested in the fee structure and the interests of Wall Street and who has an expensive wealth manager or fund manager, please read that book. Where are the customers' yachts? You don't see them. You see the yachts of the people from Wall Street, not from the customer. Rule number three, a value investing strategy is the best investment strategy. 
Why? Because when you're a value investor, you always try to buy something of value. So you check book value, you check the intrinsic value of a company, and then you try to buy it at a price as cheap as possible. But that value in a company gives you a margin of safety. If there is a crisis, a recession, there is, you know, always know, okay, I have that book value, so much tangible assets in the company that are going to me, give me a protection. So the rule is buy with a margin of safety in order not to lose money. For example, looking at Seth Klarman's portfolio, we can see that he does not own Apple because Apple has a book value of $25 per share and a stock price of $155. So there is a huge difference between the stock price and the book value. There is no margin of safety. But the company he does own is Nova Gold Resources. The company has a market capitalization of 1.3 billion and 40 billion dollars of gold under the ground. So Seth Klarman knows that when gold prices spike up, and they will in an eventual crisis, he will make a lot of money. Until then, the gold in the ground gives him a margin of safety. As it's there, it's of huge value. And he can pay 1.3 billion now for the company for something that has 40 billion or more in value. So that's investing with the margin of safety or value investing. Rule number four. When you find a good value investment, try to buy it at a price that's as low as possible. For example, Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, is now priced at $250,000 per share. However, just eight years ago, the price of a stock of Berkshire Hathaway was $75,000. So you can always wait for a stock price to really be a bargain. At $75,000, Berkshire was a great bargain. Now at 250, a little bit <laughs> less. Looking for bargains leads us to rule number five. And rule number five tells us to be patient. Investing, value investing is boring. You look at so many companies and you wait, 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 wait. You wait until there is a real bargain. You hope to buy one dollar for 50 cents. Then you know you cannot go wrong and the upside is huge. So you cannot lose when you buy 50 cents on the dollar, but the upside is 100% if the value of the stock goes back to its full value. By being patient, you wait for crisis, you wait for political turmoils in some countries, you wait for various kinds of events where people panic and sell their stock in a frenzy at a low price. A value investor is patient and buys at that time. In order to be patient, and we are now at rule number six, you have to believe that the market is inefficient. The efficient market theory says that every stock is priced rightly, that all the information available are calculated in the price of a stock. If you believe that markets are inefficient, you know that sometimes stock prices are overvalued when a value investor sells his stocks, and sometimes stock prices are very, very, very undervalued. That's when a value investor buys his investments. Rule number seven, always have enough liquidity. Never risk your lifestyle. So worst thing happens, recession, depression, whatever, you need to have enough liquidity so that you don't sell your stocks. Klarman is now managing a portfolio that's larger than $30 billion. $30 billion with a B. And he has 
at the current moment, 25% of his portfolio in cash. 25% in cash. So if any client wants to withdraw his money, he can do it easily. Or if there are extreme bargains to buy, he, can, he has the firepower to buy them. So always think about having enough liquidity to weather everything. Rule number eight. If you have a lot of liquidity, then when stock prices fall, you have to start buying at some point. You cannot wait forever. So you start buying, but sometimes what happens is that the stock price will go even lower, even lower, even lower, even lower. Claremont's advice is to not be afraid to average down. So if you know a company, if you know it well, you have analyzed the fundamentals, you know the future, what's going to happen in the future, its future perspective, you know it's going to be a good business and 10 years from now, 20 years from now, it's going to be there making money. Then you should not be afraid to buy at lower prices, buy more as the stock price declines. This happens all the time, markets are ir irrational as we said and people sell in panic. Stock prices fall, value investors buy more, buy more, buy more. When the tide turns, the highest return will be made on the lowest purchase. So don't be afraid to buy more. The following two charts will perfectly explain how Klarman approaches averaging down. In the first case, Allergan, a pharmaceutical company, Klarman started buying at prices above 200. However, when the stock dropped below 200, he simply bought more, as his research gave him confidence in the stock. Soon after, of course, the price increased. But his returns are made, most of his returns are made when the stock price is low and cheap. A second example is Chenier Energy. He was buying for a while the company, as he believes it's undervalued, and it's Klarman's largest portfolio position in the US. And as you can see, as the stock price dropped, he bought, bought and bought more. And as soon as it increased, in this case, 50% from the low, he sold what, we, what he bought. Buying at low prices, then selling, this leads to rule number nine. Don't be afraid to rebalance your portfolio. You know, at this price, this will be my exposure. If the price goes lower, this will, my exposure will be a little bit greater to that stock. When the price goes back up, you lower your exposure again. A value investor knows that the price what you pay determines the risk. The lower the price you're paying, the lower is the risk for permanent future loss. Rule number 10, and also Klarman finishes his book with this, you have to know what you're doing. If you think you can look at the stock market for 10 minutes a day or 10 minutes a week and be a great investor, mm, I'm sorry, it won't, it won't work. You have to know very well what you're doing, know how to analyze a company, know what's going on, know the macroeconomics, know the market, know your risks, know your potential returns, and simply do a lot of research. Research will allow you to see where are the bargains, what's too expensive, what's too risky, and what research always does is gives you low risk investments with high returns. Exactly what a value investor loves. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please leave a comment below. Be sure to subscribe for more investing wisdom. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.